Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 115 of Be With Me. Today, I'm going to title this and think about this. What is the value of a man? What is the value of a woman? Our passage talks about today via the tool, if you will, of a man with a withered hand. And the way this sets up is the Jesus is traveling to a new town and they set a trap for him. And then he sees the trap, and then he talks about the trap, and then he sort of does an activity and a healing that sort of sticks it in their face, and then he gives teaching about that. So let's let's listen humbly here. This is from Matthew chapter 12, and this is verse number 9. And he's going to move to a new place, and then this happens. Verse 9, he went on from there and entered the synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. He's not the only one that's there. And they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So we're at this again, the Sabbath thing. And then get this, so that they might accuse him. Like, what a terrible thing. Verse 11, and he said to them, which of you has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Verse 12, of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. The man stretched it out and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. All right, so we're <clears throat> we've been talking about the Sabbath here kind of incessantly. We uh, talked about the disciples who went along and gathered grain on the Sabbath. We talked about David and his men uh, back in First Samuel when they ed- ate the bread of the presence on the Sabbath. And then slightly more distant ago, we talked about the pool at Bethesda, where an invalid, that's where the the big line, do you want to get well? That was also on the Sabbath, and that was a big deal. So here we have a new group of people. So in verse 9, I sort of gave them the benefit of the doubt. New group, new, new synagogue, but no, we find out that their intent in verse 10 is that they may accuse him. And I was thinking about a direction. So think about the direction of this arrow of people and then Jesus uh, over there. And the direction is like to throw rocks at him, to accuse him of this, conspire against him, destroy him. So it's all like shooting towards Jesus as opposed to receiving the arrow coming back, receiving healing, receiving teaching, receiving uh, this gift of the Sabbath. Receiving Jesus' presence, receiving just awe of him. Um, so I think the arrow's going in the wrong direction. All right, so verse 11 here, uh, he's going to talk about a sheep. So which of you, so he makes it very personal and, and helps us interpret what the Old Testament says, because the Old Testament talks about the value of sheep and the value of animals and our stewardship of them. Now, working on the Sabbath, he, he says, yes, you can work on the Sabbath in this, in the context of, uh, mercy. And he's, he's developing who, what kind of a God he is, what characters he has, and what characteristics he has. And he says, yeah, I want those same characteristics in you, uh, which is mercy. So in the value of sheep. So Old Testament talks about basically be nice to your sheep and be nice even to your enemy's sheep. It's not their fault that they're owned by, you know, somebody else. And even be nice to a donkey uh, of a guy who hates you. So we do have a stewardship towards uh, sheep and, and animals. Now, they don't they don't know what day it is. They don't know that it's a, it's the Sabbath. And we're even commanded to help people who have trouble with their their animals, even if they're an enemy. But then verse 12 says, what about the value? How much more value? And that's the, that's the big point of this is man and women are more valuable than sheep. Not equal value. So you got to be careful here. The SBCA uh, and the various animal organizations, you don't want to give animals more rights and more value than they deserve. But... And why 
and often those groups seem to give people less value than they deserve and sort of violate the scripture kind of uh, both ways. So it is is absolutely lawful to do good on the Sabbath, and it's good to receive the work of God on the Sabbath. Mercy, hesed, Elios in the New Testament. So verse 13, of course, is he's restored. The hand is just perfect, uh, restored and healthy, just like the other one. And then the response, of course, is just tragic. So Jesus comes to town. That's a wonderful thing. He interacts with them, corrects their theology, and then heals this man of something that only he can do, you know, probably has a stroke or something in a hand that's all curled up, restores it like the other one. And then then, then verse 14, rather than awe, rather than receiving, rather than humility, the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. I mean, just, it's a ridiculous response. So, couple of conclusions. Number one, don't be one of Jesus' accusers. Don't be one of his destroyers. Don't be one of the conspirators against him. But point the arrow the other direction. Let's be a fan of Jesus. Let's be an admirer. Let's look at this verse with awe, and let's be receivers of his teaching. I think also don't misvalue animals. Don't misvalue sheep, ox, donkeys, cats, dogs. Uh, obviously, we're stewards and caretaker, caretakers uh, of them, even on the Sabbath. And then, uh, with regards to the Sabbath, certainly the teaching is to make it special and make room for holiness on that day, and also to make room for mercy on that day, and kind of be like Jesus did with his compassion for animals, but especially the value of people. So here's the the big thing is the value of man is greater than the value of sheep. And then think about these things that God says about us in various place, places in the Bible, that we are, we are chosen for his treasured possession. We are his elect. We are rescue worthy. He, uh, he describes his church as the vineyard, his people. And the Deuteronomy 32 says, but the Lord's portion is his people. The Lord's portion is his people and Jacob, his allotted heritage. And that we are his delight. He set his eyes upon us for good. He rejoices over us. He waits to be gracious and we're precious in his eyes. So value of man is greater than animals. Thanks for listening.